you. You did not defeat me. I was Sabrina Cavendish. I did not surrender. Good evening, Mr. Woodbeat. Good evening to you, my young doctor. Do you have any recent news on Sean Hampton's shelter? The man is still here. He's trying to help others despite the terrible things he endured. I'm impressed. Goodbye, sir.
Good evening, sir. I'm glad to see you safe. I am not safe. I should never have come back here. My life is in danger. I know it. You're much safer here than in that contaminated area. Bullets kill people quicker than diseases and epidemics, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about this district? The East End Docks only knows one rule. Dog eat dog, and blood calls for blood. The gang will have their revenge on me one way or another. What can you tell me about the locals? Most people would say that Sean Hampton and Tom Watts are good men who try to sort things out. But for me, the real boss around there was my best friend, Jack Gillingham. Jack Gillingham? Everyone ran there knew Jack. He was a rock. A mountain, even. He feared nothing. Your friend Jack has something to do with you fleeing to the contaminated area where I found you. I want to know more. Jack is dead. That's all you need to know. Dead because of me. So much violence. So much sorrow. All of that because I refuse to be insulted again. No man can predict the exact outcome of his actions. It's the curse we have to live with. We can only gamble and do what we think is best. Perhaps you're right. The district was doomed before I was born. But I cannot stop myself thinking that Jack died for me. Why do you say that? After I killed that gang member, the wet boot boy suspected Jack. And being loyal and all, he did not refute the accusation. The death of your friend has affected you deeply, hasn't it? Jack Gillingham was the real deal. He believed we could change the world if we were united and focused enough. And he brought out the best in each of us. You're right. He died to save you. That alone gives me an idea of the kind of man he was. He was the bravest. And no one dares to say openly that he got killed by those bastards. Your friend's plan was audacious, if not reckless. No one stands up by themselves to a gang like the Wet Boot Boys. How dare you say that? You never met him. You are not going to spend the rest of your life hiding, Rodney. What are you planning to do? Honestly, I have no idea. How am I supposed to live while so many have suffered because of me? Only you can answer that question. But one thing is certain. Since you owe Jack your life, I think it's fair to live it in a way that would make him proud. That's the kind of thing Jack could have said, Dr. Reed. Thank you for that. I believe you're a good guy, too. Do you need help, Mr. Grader? Death by disease or by bullet? Do I really have to choose? Well, I have nothing to stop the bullets, but this should make you feel better. You have a strange sense of humor, Dr. Reed. Well, thanks anyway. Goodbye, Mr. Grip. Good evening. Are you sure nobody followed you here, Dr. Reed? Do you have recent news of Sean Hampton's shelter? I heard he kept on helping people. But I tried to stay away from his shelter. I don't feel safe there. Goodbye, Mr. Grip. Glad. Good.
Welcome back to my humble shelter, Dr. Reed. Are you here to subdue me again? No, Sean. I just came by to see how you are. I feel all right. Why do you ask? Are you still feeding on corpses? No. It's almost as though the blood you forced me to drink has provided me eternal satisfaction. How is the sanitary situation in this part of town? There's a lot of sadness and pain in my flock. I believe we're not fully through the crisis. You should do something about it if you can, Doctor. How are things in your shelter? Between the mortals and the immortals, I mean. Even if we're all children of God, I've always maintained a strict frontier between the two communities. What do you fear? A few years ago, a Skull decided to pay a nocturnal visit to my sleeping customers. He got caught licking their necks in the dark. Since then, I have added a lock to the door. What if food became scarce? Wouldn't the immortals in your flock be tempted to feed on the living? Wouldn't you? The Skulls can feed on the dead, Doctor. And until Judgment Day, mortals will continue dying. Would you let me listen to your chest, Sean? No, Dr. Reed. You already forced me to drink your blood, and I thank you for that, for I feel better now. But it was quite an unpleasant experience. It would help me greatly if you would allow me to give you a physical examination. I said no. I'm no subject of medical examination, and I intend only to obey and to kneel before God. How did you meet old Bridget? When younger, I used to patrol the streets at night, searching for lost souls. This is how I met her. It took me two months just to get her name. Now we support each other. Had you already visited their hideout in the sewers? Just once, and very briefly. Most of them are very discreet, and they see me as an outsider, even if I protect them. You really are a saint, Sean. Oh, no, sir, I'm not. But I know evil, and I believe goodwill and tenacity can make this world a better place. Have you seen Harriet Jones since taking her to old Bridget? No. She is with the sewer scales now. I don't go downstairs. What happened at the Pembroke? I guess we recognized each other. As scales, I mean. She had but one thought. To punish. To get revenge upon everything and everyone. I realized I had to bring her here quickly. But why did she fake her own death? There was so much blood in her room. She attacked patients, too. I just lost her for a minute that night. When I found her, she had caused mayhem across the hospital. I slapped some sense into her, and we fled before getting caught. What happened then? We ran here through narrow streets and backyards. She kept saying that someone was talking to her in the dark, offering to avenge her. But I saw nobody. Farewell, Sean. Take good care of your flock. And of yourself.
blood. Come on, Barrett, you know the game. You pay for peace of... Fancy... You know... Right, then. against malevolence. Thank <laughs> you. 
Good evening, Mr. Swanborough. Is it you, Dr. Reed? Please come in. Wandering in this part of town at night, you're either bre- What can I do for you, Doctor? Your sister seems to believe this miracle elixir business is somehow doing you good. Loretta believes that keeping busy is what I need to be happy. And is she wrong? My sister is wrong about almost everything. But as long as she thinks she's in charge, she can be nice. Goodbye, Mr. Swanborough. Tell me, how do you see the world these days? <laughs>
Thank you. 